Hello everyone. My name is Jennifer Escalera and I am here with Anthony J. Rodriguez. And hey, hi. And if you would like to tune in and ask us any questions about relationships and how to metaphysically heal old loved wounds, or you just have a question for Anthony or myself, please. Uh, type in your comments below this video, and um, since we're live, we'll be able to answer them right now. So let me introduce Anthony. Um, Anthony is um, Walking Crow, is a transformational energy healing practitioner and medicine man with an emphasis on working with those in recovery from addiction. His work in private practice includes workshops that teach others how to be in their bodies and come to peace with life's trauma through the chakra system and subtle energy. Ooh, that's awesome. As a shamanic drummer, Anthony uses a 27 inch powwow drum to help others journey into other dimensions to find their spirit guides, spirit animals, gifts, healings, or just find answers in an organic way. He also hosts the Transformational Sacred Drum Medicine show weekly on the blog talk radio and has created men in self-care from his own life experiences and healing journey. He facilitates this group and helps men in a sacred and safe non-judgmental environment find their voice and have a platform to speak on difficult issues or any other subject that men are affected by in daily life past traumas, or triumphs. Awesome. Cool. Thank you, Anthony, for being here. You're welcome. Thanks. Thank you for having me. Oh, my gosh. You're, you do such amazing work. I'm so impressed. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. It's interesting to hear somebody else read my bio. You know, I bet, it, huh? It doesn't fall on me the same way when I read it. It's just like, oh, this is what I do. <laughs> but when somebody <laughs> else reads it, it, it really sounds different. Yeah, yeah. I don't so, want to say impressed, but it's really, it touches me. Oh, good. Good, good, yeah. good. So maybe you can touch on that, you know, highlight, tell us a little bit about, so the, my intention for today is to talk to you from a male's perspective about oh. relationships and love and really the essence of how to heal when you're dealing with a breakup or um, old love wounds and take us through that journey. And so let's let's start with just some of the basics of what are your thoughts about relationships and love and what can you tell us women about your journey as a man that could better help us to understand men? Well, um, first of all, first of all, I, I, I've, I've been of the opinion and the thought that for a long time and the experience that um, men to a degree have been castrated and um, our voice, even though it's a male-dominated world, uh, I think a lot of that comes from not having a voice, not having a true voice, not having a true sense of self, not having a true sense of self-worth in, in, our, in our fire third chakra of who we are, the I am. And, um, you know, a lot of times we, when it comes to relationships, uh, you know, men talk to each other mostly about superficial things, sports, whatever, whatever women, whatever it is. Not that women are superficial, I apologize. But we talk about things that are, are that are really not too personal most of the time. And if, if we actually do get to a level where we speak on a personal basis with one another as men, um, you know, it, it's difficult. It, it sticks in our throat, uh, in, our, in our fifth chakra expression. Uh, and, um, and that happens in our relationships. You know, we don't know how to express ourselves to our uh, significant other, if you will, because we're afraid of being shamed. We're afraid of not being loved. We're afraid of not being liked. Uh, what will she think of me? Will she still want to be with me even though I express X? So we have a tendency not to say what we really want to and need to and have to say. And it affects, you know, well, what is a divorce rate now? 60%, if not more, you know, and not just the divorce rate, but the breakup rate, rate, uh, rate in, with regards to relationships where people, they hold back and they refrain because they don't want to rock the boat. You know, but those red flags appear, you know, when somebody comes in and kicks the dog or the kids are being yelled at or you're being grumbled at by your husband or your loved one. And like, well, you know, how do you a woman reacts a lot of times in defense or from the same place, <laughs> if you will. 
from a place of maybe potential shaming or, or hurt or not being loved and whatever it is, you know, we don't always know that that's the case. We just react and we don't know why we're reacting until somebody actually points it out. Yeah. What are some of those red flags that could help um, other women who are not really clear about a healthy relationship or they think that they're in a healthy relationship, but they don't even know that they're attracting the wrong guys or maybe the bad boy types. Uh, what, what are some red flags that you could identify? Well, if you're attracting the bad boy types, you know, you know, you really need to talk, think about and, and ask about, ask yourself about your daddy issue because it's there. I believe that all women from one to 100 have or, or need their daddy. You know, yeah. and whether he's in your life or not. Same with with, with young men and, and men from one to hundred. We need our mommies. I had to overcome a mommy issue, and most men have a mommy issue. And I'm not saying that to shame anybody or make them feel bad about themselves. That's just the truth. Moms, uh, my generation, were busy working outside the house. They weren't around. Somebody else was sometimes picking us up from school, and we were being dropped off early, you know, early in the morning, and then dropped off again at that same place, and then. Dad would pick us up in the afternoon. And so mom wasn't around a lot to nurture, to care for, and, and, and do the things that she needed to do as a mother. I'm not saying she didn't do it. She did it the best she could because she was, she was an absentee mom. You know, we weren't latchkey kids, but we were pretty close. You know? yeah. And the same with dad. Dad worked an eight-hour day. Um, my father, unfortunately, was an alcoholic. And, um, you know, there's a disconnect there. For us, and, and, and with regard to the sacred, with regard to our heart, I, I don't know if I, my father had ever told me in my life that he loved me before he passed. I don't know. So you know, um, things to look for are, you know, um, what 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 he ex what a guy expects from you. You know, what uh, uh, you know is it just about sex? And, and because by the way, there's a lot of people that mistake sex for love. Yeah. And, Sex isn't love. Uh, sex is a part of being loved, and sex is, is a is, is a physical action. But a lot of people use words behind the action of sex to justify what it is they're doing, instead of just saying, "You know what? I want to have sex with you. I want to have a good time. Let's roll and move on." They don't know how to do that. They say, "Oh, I love you," and then before you know it, there's a kid involved. People are getting married. There's families involved, and then to the sixty percent divorce rate. Yeah. <laughs> For you sure. know, because they said words that they didn't really mean. It's okay to, I feel, and people will take me to task on this, I feel, it's, they, I feel it's okay to have the physical action, do that, and be okay with it, and not feel shame or guilt about doing that and move on. Because, you know, and ask your partner. Talk to your partner about that before you do that. Are you okay with this? Because if you're not, don't do it. You know, you know and, and you can tell by a, a, from a guy with his bravado where he's coming from. You know, tap into the sensitivity of the man and try to understand him. And same with men for women. Men really need to try to tap into the sensitivity and understanding of women, and uh, especially when you're going to spend time intimately with them. You know, and not, not just, I mean, in a sexual way, but intimacy with, with regard to, you know, sitting across the table and having a cup of coffee or having a meal or sitting next to each other in a park and having conversations. Tap into that because we don't. And, we, and most men don't know how because it doesn't involve a football or baseball or basketball or something else. Yeah. Right. right. So what are some, um, how do you, all right, maybe I should ask this in another way. How do you help your clients, whether they're male or female, um, with how to heal the pain from a breakup or the loss of a loved one because of a divorce or a split up cheating, you know, do you work with them with their energy centers or what, what's some of the process that you take your clients through? One of the things that we do is I do is we have a conversation and what I ask questions and I start to pull the thread of the sweater to unravel it. Uh, while I'm doing that, I take a couple of steps back and I start looking at the, the energetic body, the subtle energy of the body. I start looking at the second chakra. I start looking at the fourth chakra, the heart, the third chakra, the self-esteem. I start looking about, about the, at the energy around or up, in and around the mouth and shoulder area and what they do with their hands. 
I look at their, their third eye, I look at their, their crown chakra and see where they are. Are they living up in their head? Because it's really obvious when somebody's living up in their head and they're holding energies in, in the fifth chakra and they're blocked. Um, uh, mm -hmm. A lot of times when it, I'll, I'll, I'll ask, where are your parents? And, and a, a lot of times the answer I get is, oh, I'll, I'll use one example. For instance, a young lady walked into the spots where I work part-time a few weeks ago and she said, um, and we started having the conversation. And I saw, I went right to her second chakra and I was looking at her. And she said, I've never known my father. I don't know my father. My mom was with this guy once and she got pregnant and here I am. And, and I could hear the brokenness of, in her voice of, of not being able uh, to know that person, to ever know her father, her dad. She just knows his name is Franco. That's all she said. Yeah. So I said, to her, I said, listen, I said, there's a broken connection, but you have to understand because it's in the sacrum. I said, because it's in the sacrum, your place of water, uh, emotion, connection, grandmother, moon, 28 day cycle, letting go. That's the, uh, the, the, uh, the four directions, direction of the West. You have to understand that that's where seed was planted and that's where you, where your emotion lies with the situation. So you're going to have to un understand and how to be, teach yourself how to be with your, that memory or energy of your father in a different way. Of, it's not a dad, of a father. And I said, and you're going to have to understand that you're first and foremost, that seed. You are of him. And you are here. You are here, right here, right now. So you need to stand in your power, in your place, in your in your root of who you are as a woman, as a strong woman. I said, by the way, do you ever have a, 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 extra, a, a sex outside of a relationship? She says, no, I respect my vagina. She used a different word, but she said, I respect my, I said, then you learn the lesson of your mother. Aho. You learn the lesson of your mother. You get to stand strong in the woman of who you are. And understand that what you want is bigger than just one night stand. You want something for you, something that's meaningful. Somebody that's not going to replace your father, but he's going to be that man that you can look to. That you can have a relationship in a good way. The relationship that you never had. Like I said, all women need their daddy, whether they're one or 100. They all need their daddy. I said, and stand in the good news that you are and he are present right here, right now, because you are seed of that person. And that's it. And that's all. I said, and when you when it comes time to be with that and learn how to love yourself, take deep breaths in through, your, in through your lungs, in through your heart space. I love, I'm loved. That passes right through the heart space into the third chakra, the fire, the fuego. I can, I will, I do, I am. And allow that fire to be stoked by the oxygen that comes into the body because fire needs oxygen to grow. Steam, fire, fuego. And allow that fire to hit that steam that water in the second chakra and allow it to boil over and pour into the root chakra and water the root chakra so they can grow. So you become the tree that doesn't get knocked down by the four winds. And yeah. that steam, that heat from that fire heats up that water and creates steam, esteem, steam, and rises up into the third chakra and up to the heart and warms the heart mm -hmm. and opens up the fifth chakra and allows you to come out of your head of your thinking and the spinning and the story of a lifetime and you get to express yourself now of those things and free yourself of that baggage and bondage that you've been carrying around for a lifetime. She's 26 years old. Mm -hmm. She's been carrying that around for 26 years. She was a beautiful girl. Mm -hmm. But I saw her. I said, boom. And she, was, she stood with me in that store and she cried for an hour. Wow. Wow. You know, I never know what I'm going to get when I, when I walk in those doors over there. But I always know that somebody's going to get something. <laughs> I I love the, the beautiful story of taking you, taking us through each energy center. You know, oh. I can really feel it and I can see it. And I feel that oftentimes my clients who are blocked about relationships or they're afraid to get into another relationship because there's so much in their head, there's so much into the ego or into the pain that they yeah. forget about their personal power. And you just sharing that simple little illustration of how to, you know, nurture your root and moving everything up and yeah. letting go of all those messages. You know, it's it freeing the person. Coming down and coming up into your center, into your, the fourth chakra is the heart. It's right. the bridge to from the lower to the higher self, from the body to the higher self. This yeah. is where we, where we want to live here. And by the way, um, I told one of the things I said to that young lady is, you're never going to know that man. So 
you need to come into the power and the understanding of that and just be sure and true and in the power of who you are because really that's what it boils down to especially in relationships it's not about the other person it's about me and what i bring in who i am and what i do and how i feel there's a lot of eyes involved in the we yes yeah. you know and that's what people forget they get lost and they forget that you know their that their feelings are important you know, I wonder if he's thinking about you. You should be thinking about you. Never mind what he's thinking. <laughs> because right. exactly. You know, because there's a lot of disappointment in that in that kind of thinking. Yeah. You know, um, because they may not be. And I found out from somebody who I dated 20 years ago that she'd been thinking about me from time to time when she finally sent me a text message or a message yesterday on Facebook apologizing and acknowledging my kindness in the person that I was 20 years ago. And that was a beautiful thing because I had no clue that, you know, I haven't thought about her for 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, she, I, I saw her last week in that store. She popped in. I was looking at this woman. I'm like, excuse me, Jess. And she didn't even recognize me. Uh huh. And now we're at this place where I got this beautiful apology in this, in this letter of kindness. And it was like, wow, you know, cause I'm going through divorce. And that was something that I really needed because we don't know we feel good about ourselves. You know, because yeah. we can't, we were not able to connect with that person that we want, that we wanted to love or want to love in a good way because they're no longer invested or vested in a relationship. Mm -hmm. So getting that kind of uh, acknowledgement um, and edification from somebody else or from somewhere is a beautiful thing, especially when you're not asking for it or looking I, for it. I know. That's a nice surprise. That's a nice gift, right? Yes. yes. The heavens are great. They pour down on us when we at least expect it. <laughs> exactly. So how do you see a spirituality in relationships? You know, I, I've heard of the word conscious, uh, conscious love or conscious relationships. And I'm not sure if you see that connected to spirituality or it's an interchangeable word. But how, how do you bring about spirituality in relationships? Everything I do is from a spiritual place, and I always talk about who and what I am and what I'm doing. Um, uh, in my relationships over the last five to six years, that has been a central theme. I am who I am. My life is about me. My life is not about you, but you're a part of my life. Kind of like um, I'm, 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 if I'm a drop of water, I'm, if I'm a raindrop, I'm of the ocean, but I'm not the ocean. Yeah. yeah. The whole uh, Buddhist Zen type thinking. Um, yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm not, this relationship is about us, but this relationship is mostly about me and me first always, because if I can't take care of me first always, I can't take care of you. I can't give away something I haven't got. And that comes from uh, the, the 12 step programs. You can't give away what you haven't got. The example of getting on an airplane and then expressing if the, if the pressure drops in the cabin and the masks fall, Put the mask on yourself first, because if you if you're flailing and can't get oxygen, you can't help your child who's sitting next to you who's going through the same trauma. So right. me first, always mask on me first, and then you, and then we're both good. But if we're both gone, there's yeah. no point. So it's really about connecting and becoming aware, and letting the other person know about the awareness of you, I have of self and how I want to move into the world and. and with regard to my connection to others, because I love connecting to people. And I'm, you know, I have a lot of fr new friends that I'm making, uh, especially when you're going through something like what I'm going through. We yeah. start to make a lot of new friends, and, and there's people who are special and um, more special than others, I'll say it that way. And you want them to know this is how I feel, this is how I felt, this is. And you want to give them some of the things you probably have walked through, but you don't want to give them everything because you don't want to drag that relationship into another relationship, into a present relationship. You want to be able to use the, the examples and the um, lessons from that space in this present space and just let them know that, you know what, um, even though I'm high human, you know, you got to remember high human, <laughs> I'm human. Yeah. I made mistakes. This is where I'm trying to get to from point A to point B, but I'm going to make mistakes and I'm going to be fallible. So I have to have the understanding that you are too. And the things that the mistakes you make and the things you do have nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. They really don't. 
they're about you and, and, and your path and your goals and your 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 awareness. You know, because my awareness is yet yeah, your awareness. Your awareness is not my awareness. But we can share that. We can have a common thread and we can have a common path um, with a lot of different lanes and a lot of different awarenesses going down the road. And I'm willing to stand behind you and support you, you know, in the in the heart space or in the third chakra of, of fire fuego. I can, I will, I do. I'm willing to stand by you, next to you, and walk with you. And I'm willing to, if I have to, get in front of you and pull you along if you, if you do desire and ask for help and need help to move forward because sometimes we're not capable of doing that in an understanding of ourselves. You know, mm-hmm. we're human, you know, and living in the, in the, in the, in the physical and the, and the spiritual world in the, at the same time can be rather difficult. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's just living just in one. Mm-hmm. So what's uh, one tip for women who going back to the fear, you know, who, there's a, there's a huge part of them that wants to find an honest, amazing guy, a lasting relationship, but there's a big part of them that they're still stuck in fear. So go ahead, what, go ahead. what tip do you have to, to address that? Well, it's hard to live in fear because nobody, there's no forward movement, no forward motion living in fear. It's stuck. That's stuck energy. So understanding that whatever happened in that relationship is no longer happening. Yeah. And I have to say, I have to say, I learned that from my, from my ex-wife. I learned that from Vanessa. She would say about something that happened in her childhood. It's not happening anymore. And when she said that, I heard it, not just in here audi- audibly. I heard it here. It landed here. It landed in my third chakra, in my fire. It landed in my connection to others. So it's not happening anymore. You can start fresh. I'm not saying to forget about that, but I'm saying to forgive yourself for having that experience because there's a lot of forgiveness that people don't take time to give themselves. They're, they'll forgive others. Or they won't forgive others and say they do, but they won't forgive themselves. Forgive yourselves for making a decision that you made. It's it's okay to make mistakes. Hi, human. Yeah, <laughs> and, right. take, and, and and step down, sit down or, or stand and close your eyes and take that breath through the heart space. And stoke that fire in the third chakra and allow that fire to heat that that water in the sacrum, place of connection, place of healing, place of creation. Procreation, co-creation, a whole place of emotion and allow that fire to, that, that water to boil and again, wa- o- overflow and water that root chakra and allow the, the steam, steam to rise into that place and warm the heart, warm your heart and know that you are beloved and you are worthy of love because you are love. Love is an action. Love is not a saying. <laughs> yeah. You know, love is an action. Love yourself and take that breath. And it's all about you and set the intention of what you want. First for you. Do you want to love you first and be able to offer yourself in a different way, in a better way? Or do you want to go out there and get love from somebody and 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 keep doing that? Because that doesn't work. That right. just doesn't work, you know? And it's like, I had to let go of that, my, my expectation of others. Dangling a carrot of expectation in front of, in front of others, spoken or unspoken. Yeah. <laughs> You right. Know, I have no right to do that to somebody. Hmm. You know, even if, if I won't take care of myself. You know, other people aren't out there to take care of me. They're out there to, like I said, walk with me, be with me, you know, stand with me. But they're not there to take care of me and and and, and babysit me through uh, my brokenness and my disconnection to myself and others. You know, I want to create connection, and that's what really my life work is about. It's about creating connection to self and others through self. I yes. hope. <laughs> Beautifully said. Yes, absolutely. I think connection is one of those real subtle words, but it's so key. It's important that you see your relationships as connection. It's energy. I hope. And through that energy of connection, you can be unconditional. You could be fearless and vulnerable but we often as our human side as our unhealthy ego we go into that dark space of closing off you know our heart chakra is closed off and 
you know, we're just in that total turmoil of the world is bad or I can't trust this person. And some of that is um, generational uh, yeah. that we carry on, that we learn from our parents or and they learn from their parents. And so we're, we're recycling old stuff, generational, ancestral stuff that we don't need to carry in this lifetime. I mean, that's definitely something that I emphasize with my clients that a lot of these belief systems are traditions. You know, they're old ancestral traditions that we don't have to carry on in this lifetime. So how do we break through that? It's funny that you, you said that because I, over, over the last couple of years, I've been having a lot of conversation with my mother to, to, to repair and heal the mommy issue which has yeah. been healed and repaired. I have such a beautiful relationship with my mother now because I used to go over there trying to get something from her. I wanted something from her, something that she hadn't, she wasn't capable of giving to me. Yeah. She didn't even know what it was. And um, we sat down and we had conversations and I learned a lot. You know, I have asthma. As my asthma is wound trauma. You know, my father was an alcoholic and in, in, in my gestation period, in that household, there were arguments and there was tension and there was stress. Stress hormones go up in the body of the mother. Stress hormones go up in the body of the baby. She felt unloved. That landed in my heart, lungs, airspace. So I have uh, 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 asthma, which um, uh, I've had to deal with for a lifetime. Now, I have an inhaler that rides around with me in my car, but I use that inhaler maybe once a year, maybe. Oh, wow. I don't use it. That's a, that's symbolic of the work that I have done with myself and with her. I no yeah. longer go over there with an expectation, uh, unspoken or unspoken, that she's going to that she should give me something. I had to go back to being a child as a man, not going back to being a child as a child, and and give myself things that were good for me that were different. And that's where miscellaneous men and self care came from. Mm-hmm. I started nurturing myself. I would go for coffee in the morning. I would read books. I would go for hikes early in the morning. I would spend alone time. I would take naps during the day. I would send resumes out when I wasn't working. I would work with my clients and then go to a meeting or go to lunch or something. I I learned how to give myself things that I was never given as a child, but they were things as of a man that I needed right here, right now, because that's not happening anymore. There's nothing I can do to change what happened. There's, I can only change what's right here, right now, in my presence, in, her, in the presence of my mother, and love her in a good way. And a conversation we had was, uh, we were talking about growing up, and she said, you know, I tried to raise you kids like my parents raised us. Mm. And I heard those magic words. Yeah. <sighs> it touched me. It touched my heart. It touched my my, my fire, it touched my connection to her, my connection to, to the lineage, to my yes. ancestral lineage. It touched generations back, and I heard that, and I was like, okay, I can live with that. I don't yes. have to wait for anything from you. That was the rub. That was, that was what I needed to hear, or what I wanted to hear, I should say. And it was a beautiful moment with my mother, and I got, I was just like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then she said, you know, you need to stop asking questions. You need to get past this. I said, no, this was it. This was the magic. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, she lives with good memories of her parents. Does she have bad memories? Yes, but she doesn't live in those. Yeah. She lives in the presence of the good memories and the presence of being right here, right now. And that's where I want to be with people, right here, right now. What do you want, listeners out there? Do you want to be in your head or do you want to be right here, right now? Uh, not spinning the story, living the living your story. Let's live the story. You know, absolutely. Oh. <laughs> yes, so beautiful. Whew. So, I had one other question, and it just slipped my mind. But let me let me try to pull it from somewhere. <laughs> or please <laughs> please now, because <laughs> we are live. Yes. Actually, let me just check and see if there's anyone that has a comment or a question. Um, now would be a good time to ask. I'm still working on learning how to use this Be Live thing, so I apologize if if I've skipped any comments. Um, nope, I don't see any comments. But if you have a comment, go ahead and and ask now. Um, let's see. 
Mm. All right. Well, we are almost out of time. And are there any last minute tips or offerings that you want to share with us? And oh, I know what it was. I interject before okay. I close out. <laughs> The biggest struggle that I hear from my clients, from my female clients, is communication with guys. So what is it about communication and guys that you can explain to us? How, how do we get around that? How do we deal with that as women? Well, first off, there's no getting around it. And understand that most men don't know how to communicate because a lot of us growing up have been told to shut up, be quiet, go to your room. You should be seen and not heard. A lot of that stuff. And by the way, I thank all the people who told me those things because I get to do this with you and I get to have a radio show later on today and I get to speak the things that I speak. Yeah. We don't, we're not all the same and we don't all communicate the same. And women want, I feel, my experience is that women want us to be a certain way and um, and say certain things and, and speak a certain way, but they don't they don't know how to either. So they, they there's this expectation, unreasonable expectation. But what needs to happen is the understanding of this man may not know how. And if it shows up, and it usually does, you know, in your relationship, you know, well, maybe you do, maybe you don't. I know in my relationships, I see it, and it's very yeah. clear. Somebody yeah. has taken somebody else's voice away or they somebody has let other people keep their voice away. And we don't even know that. You know, we, we, we make up for it with bravado. We make up for it with drinking. We make up for it with sexuality, you know, being, you know, forward with women. Um, a lot of the times that's just mask. Understand, mm -hmm. that, you know, if you're a woman and you're wearing a mask to look good in front of somebody, guess what? That may be coming across the other way too, and you got to get past the mask. Put the mask down if you really want what you want. Be who you are. Be your uh, be your intuitive self. Be your be your um, acknowledge who you are and stand in your spirit of the woman that you are, not in the mask of what media or social media tells you to do or be or behave. Be yeah. be real. Be can't think of the word. I'm drawing a blank on the word on the word. But be who you are, who you've always been. That's what I try to be. I try to be transparent as I can possibly be. Will I always have the words to say to you? Not always. Hi, human. There again. Remember, as human as you are, so is the next person. And that's how we walk on this earth while we're here. We're, we're just human. And we, we some of us don't know. And why should we? We've been taught domesticated in a particular way. Let's undomesticate ourselves by starting to undomesticate ourselves first right here right now me first always you first always yeah yeah beautiful well anthony this has been a pleasure and i really appreciate you sharing your wisdom and your gifts the the beautiful messages that you have to say i mean you're just so articulate very eloquent in, in how you describe your experiences and I know that the women who will watch this later are going to so appreciate um, hearing from you. Thank you. I appreciate that. So how can we continue to learn more about you or how, how do we connect to you? How, how do you? You can connect to me through my website at uh, sacreddrum24.weebly.com. It's a temporary website because I'm still in, in the process of launching my website or they can reach me at anthony at sacreddrummedicine.com. Or okay, they let, me, let me type it in. So it's www.sacreddrummedicine. It's www.sacreddrum24.weebly.com. Oh, .com. Okay, awesome. So and then my email here. is anthony at sacreddrummedicine.com. Anthony at sacredmedicine. Sacreddrummedicine.com. Sacreddrummedicine. Thank you. You're welcome. Dot com. Okay. And if there are um, any women who are dealing with old loved ones or a heartbreak, I have a free downloadable checklist that can help you um, get started through these next 30 days. Just go to my website, 
www.badboydetox.com. I'll also put it in the comments. And you can grab your free gift there. I also have a video to go with it, and it explains to you um, how to use the, the checklist. So thank you, everyone, for uh, watching and being with us. And hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Thanks, Anthony. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.